So, um, just being on film, first and foremost, is like really um, anxiety inducing for me. We, we should be doing every day is doing something that puts us outside our comfort zone. Um, you know, if you don't do something that makes you uncomfortable every day, you're not going to grow as a person. Um, I remember growing up, my mom, one of my, one of her favorite sayings was face your fears, they'll disappear. And so, you know, actually doing this was a good way for me to kind of face my fears. And here I am. So, um, I'm glad that I was actually able to overcome that and for being able to have the opportunity to do so. So my last few videos have been commentaries on some of my films. I tried to do a commentary on my most recent film, Shoulder Angels, but the movie is so short that I couldn't really say anything I wanted to say if I were to do it in that same format. There's also personal things about myself that I'd like to share, uh, you know, personal stories about myself that, you know, helped inspire this movie. And I'd like to go behind the scenes a little bit on what my creative process was on this movie, but a lot of this video is going to be you know, a bit personal, and I want to warn everybody that there is going to be a little bit of talk about suicide in here because I, that's an incredibly important issue, and that's part of what this movie explores. It's a big part of what this movie explores, so I'm going to be talking a little bit about my own experience with that that helped fuel this movie. I think for any piece of art, it's always in some way a reflection of yourself. You're always communicating something from your own experiences or something that's important to you, even if the movie you're making is a corporate cash grab, there's still part of you within the movie. In this case, my movie was very personal to me and comes from a deep place in my own human psyche. I've always had problems with friends pretty much my entire life. In the past, I've gotten possessive and jealous, and that continued from elementary school through teen and even adult years. I've been an asshole to certain people, and I've done a lot of things I'm not proud of. On the other hand, I also tend to attract people who are, I guess, emotionally unstable, for lack of a better word, or don't have communication skills. So in that sense, I've been taken advantage of by a lot of people because I could be a bit of a pushover. People would take advantage of my kindness and discarded me when they were ready to discard me without a shred of remorse. So in a way, the characters in this film, both the heroine and the abuser, are both sides of myself from my past. When writing both characters, I took from my own self. The main thing that influenced this movie, though, was one friendship that absolutely destroyed me for several years. In my senior year of high school, this girl kept flirting with me, who was in pretty much all my classes because it was part of the big picture school that I made a documentary about. She was very forward about it, as if she really wanted to be best friends. She was really cute and seemed like a really cool person, but at first I was really weirded out by it. She's a naturally affectionate person, but with me there was something extra there, and I had never experienced that before. Eventually I sort of fell into it and we became really close friends. She was easily the best friend I had at the time. She invited me to prom and I went with her. She met my family, she hung out with me all the time. She gave me a hug any chance she could. She would sit extra close to me in class or even rest her head on me as if we were dating. It was like this weird friendship where we weren't quite dating, but we acted like we were. And everyone around us saw it. I started developing feelings and thought maybe she felt the same way, so I told her that. And she said she didn't feel the same way, but she didn't want our friendship to end, and she wanted to maintain it. We hung out one last time before she went on a two-month outward bound trip. She told me she was excited to hang out with me again when she got back home. Eventually, she did get home, and she texted me saying she'll see me soon and that she has a lot of stories to tell me she just needs to, you know, adjust to normal life again after Outward Bound. After that, she disappeared from the face of the earth. I tried calling, texting, talking to her friends, to reach her, everything, but I couldn't get a hold of her. She was just gone. Another two or so months go by, and I'm still trying to get a hold of her. I didn't really give up, and I was really worried about her and our friendship. I eventually did get a hold of her, and she was upset with me for continuously trying to reach her. I apologized, and we were good for a bit, and she once again said she'd hang out with me soon, and even sent me a Snapchat memory of the two of us. You know, saying, hey, we're still friends, we had great memories and stuff. Another week or so passes, and we get into this big fight where she insulted and invalidated me a lot, lots of cruel things were said to me. Uh, and, and then I lashed back even harder out of anger and said a lot of things I shouldn't have said and she blocked me, kind of rightfully so. Months go by and we run into each other at a school event, we don't talk to each other, 
kind of just walked by each other. I texted her, and we both apologized to each other after that. Uh, we become friends again for a bit and see a few movies together, and she seems happy to have me back in her life and mend a broken friendship. I had a history of being kind of needy with her and with other friends in my past because I really hated myself. So she would essentially go through phases where she was really kind and supportive to me, and then the next moment she wouldn't answer me for a month or she would suddenly be really crass with me. Because of this, I had no idea what to do, keep her as a friend or try to forget her. Eventually, months later, she told me that she didn't want to be my friend anymore and told me I never mattered to her. The really difficult part of that was her insisting that I never mattered to her. That's what really hit the nail in the coffin for me. So much of my own self-worth was tied to her and our friendship and how much she loved and cared about me. I was so used to being validated by her and using that to make me happy rather than doing that with my own self. It was my own toxicity that helped fuel this it was like both toxicity on both of our parts. And I was just completely broken when she just insisted that our friendship never mattered. I was already going through a horrible time for my mental health, so just this just added on to that and made me suicidal. After that conversation, I remember riding a bus home after going to a class. I was riding my bus back home, uh, planning a way to kill myself. There had been a lot of bad things in my life for the last few years leading up to this. So it was a combination of a lot of things, but this, you know, relationship ending in this terrible way was sort of the final nail in the coffin to make me want to commit suicide. I think the only thing that broke me out of it eventually was my mom realizing I was struggling, and she helped me get out of the suicidal state that I was in. And this is only scratching the surface of this entire story with this friend. There's a lot more to it that I didn't even get into. What my character is going through after she enters the woods in this movie is completely based on this experience with this friend. The abuser character at the beginning of the movie is nothing like this friend I'm talking about. I simply use this abusive character as a way to get my character in a place of suicide because of her dependency on another person. If you skip the beginning sequence and start the movie where we're in the woods, it is completely based on this story I've just told you. The idea with the character in this movie is that she still loves the person that treated her horribly. She regrets splitting off from him, and she wants to make this toxic relationship work, because that's how I felt about this friend for years. Even though she treated me like crap, I still wanted to make the friendship work, because I still cared about this person. The idea with this movie is also that people absolutely can help you be happier, but you're the one that needs to take control of your own life. You can't depend on other people to fuel your happiness. The character goes through a journey of self-loathing and codependency to self-love and independence, all represented as the physical beings of the shadow and the angel, or whatever you'd call it. Both of these supernatural characters are part of her, if that wasn't obvious already, which is why I called the movie Shoulder Angels, based on the old trope and cartoons and stuff, with the devil and the angel on the character's shoulders. That's what this title was based on. My main actress Morgan voices both angels, and she does a really good job, I think. I've learned that abusive relationships are not uncommon. Um, many people experience them, and many people, you know, make it through them, myself included. Um, and the character, what I, what she really meant to me was, she is who I wish I could have been when I was in my abusive relationship. I didn't leave. Um, it finally got to a point where they left, which in the long run obviously is for the best, but, um... I didn't have the strength in that moment, and she was really able to overcome the fear um, and kind of face all of the, you know, emotional demons that come along with being in an abusive relationship. So she really was who I wish I could have been. Another thing that helped inspire this movie was ideas from some of my other movies that I decided to repurpose and reutilize in some fashion. In my horror movie, Paul, which I did recently did a video talking about, I had the Scarecrow character. That was a supernatural presence that represented something for the main character. I left it kind of open what that character could mean. Eventually, Paul shoots this character with a gun. In Shoulder Angels, I repurposed the idea of a supernatural being. The thing that it represents is a lot more clear and obvious, I think. it's In Paul, it's open-ended, but in this, it's pretty clear what it means. And eventually... 
the lead character shoots it with a gun, just like Paul did. I also took from my other movie Only the Lonely, which is another film I made about depression and suicide, where the character also has a gun to her head and she's about to commit suicide. In Shoulder Angels, I decided to do that again, but combine it with Paul, where she takes the weapon and quite literally shoots her demons instead of herself. The part where the shadow gives the heroine the gun is inspired by The Shining, where Lloyd the bartender gives Jack Torrance the alcohol he wants so bad. This supernatural being that may or may not be real helps push Jack Torrance into insanity by giving him this drink and fueling his abusive alcoholism. In my movie, the character is given a weapon to kill herself, which, similar to Jack Torrance and the alcohol, is the last thing she needs right now. I also wanted the shadow to seem seductive in a way, which is why they both hug and it seems like the shadow is trying to comfort her, even though she's obviously this, you know, outwardly physical, like, like, scary, sinister thing from the outside, but her voice seems kind of seductive while, I don't know, a little bit evil at the same time. That represented anxiety overcoming her, but also how attractive suicide can seem when you're in a state like this, almost like it's a relief. I essentially tried to cram in a huge mental journey that could take months or years in real life into a short film, and hopefully I succeeded in that. It's only one small chapter in this person's life, and maybe someday I could continue her story in a mental journey in another film, maybe a sequel or something. Until then, I hope Shoulder Angels was emotionally impactful for you, and I thank you so much for watching. If you're able, please share this film around and spread the word. My goal is to use my work to help people, so any small bit that you can do helps. Before I sign out, I just want to say something. Trauma can just be a significantly terrible experience in someone's life that has lasting effects that can, it can affect your ability to function. This friendship with this person was completely traumatic for me and affected every part of my life on a daily basis. She came into my life and became my best friend. I sort of fell in love and then she, and then she walked all over me and destroyed me in an extremely cruel fashion, coming in and out of my life again and again. It wasn't traditional abuse, but it was still kind of emotional abuse in a way, and it's valid trauma for me. Continuously going back and forth from caring a lot to suddenly insulting me or throwing me aside was incredibly harmful and had permanent and lasting effects on me. For me, that's perfectly valid, and I shouldn't feel bad because it's not the same as physical abuse or anything like that. People have obviously gone through way worse. If I ever do make that sequel to Shoulder Angels, I'll use it to continue exploring what this friendship did to me. Other people's actions are completely out of our control. How they make us feel is really, really valid. Um, you know, all the things that the main character was feeling, you know, everything that she had been through, it, you know, why she was feeling the way she was, you know, it's totally understandable um but you know th their actions isn't what makes us a victim um really what ha what makes us a victim is succumbing to the fear and the despair so i think the main point of this is that sometimes we have to make a conscious decision to be happy. Um, whether that's leaving that bad relationship or whether it's challenging the negative self-talk that we all have. Um, some people are just better able to kind of shut that voice out, I guess. Um, so we really do have to make that choice to choose happiness over despair um and we really have to choose to disregard that inner voice that seeks to isolate and seeks to destroy us so um i think that that probably is the main point that is being made here in the film um and i hope that anybody who's watching it um chooses happiness so, 
thank you very much for your time, and I hope you enjoy the movie. Also, if you feel so inclined, let me know what kinds of videos you want to see from this channel. Or, hell, you could just ask me questions, and maybe if I get enough questions, I'll do a Q&A. Yeah, just ask me questions in the comments, request videos that you'd like to see from me, and maybe I'll try to get some stuff done before school starts up at the end of August. Much love in this very difficult time, and thanks for watching. Bye. All right, right, right leg up, right leg up. Yeah. <laughs> I am the worst at this. What's the matter, trainer? Oh, the trainer hasn't issued an order. Taken down in one hit. <laughs> what are you gonna do about this, Luigi? We only have 30 minutes left until the concert. What else does he say? Something, 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 at least. <laughs> <laughs> you can't keep me here. Off it. I leave when I be practically every. <laughs> what what are you gonna do about this, Luigi? We only have 30 minutes left until the concert. I'm saying that because. And uh, what's the other line I was supposed to say? There was one that we were know, thinking of. I don't know. remember what it is. Who told you to think? I didn't give you enough information to think. Is that good? Probably. <laughs> hey, we're about to shoot. We're about to shoot. Focus. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'm very sad. Is it my first line? Or your second line? <laughs> Yeah. No, oh, okay, so I'm going first, is what I meant? Yeah. yeah I don't yeah, have yeah. a line here. Yeah, no, you don't. Right, okay. What's the matter, trainer? The trainer hasn't issued an order! <laughs> I already forgot all the lines, I was... <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, these guys did lots of drugs. <laughs> <laughs> don't you see that? There's, like, clouds in the background. They're all hallucinating. Camera got moving on me, man. Oh, so I always send him down into the nether because I always get really scared of going down there, and I'm also terribly afraid of Endermen. Yeah, like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like I see them like coming out of the out of the distance, and I straight up like scream out loud. <laughs>